I think we can start. Uh, hopefully a few more people trickle in, but usually uh, they do. Um, but anyway, uh, welcome guys to the 25th uh, weekly dev call of Matchbox DAO. Uh, this is a call where we uh, basically get various people and projects to come onto the call to update the whole community on what they're working on. This can be projects that are currently in the incubator. These, these can be projects that uh, have participated in a hackathon, who are exploring incubation. And it could also be projects that uh, aren't necessarily affiliated with Matchbox, but who are building on StarkNet and doing interesting things. Um, and today we have two very interesting projects. Um, the first project is actually a hackathon team, which uh, they they did the imposter game uh, and I'm very curious to see how they have progressed since then um, and what they have in store for us. And the second point on the agenda is going to be Casey and his music tools. He's been heads down building, building, building. And it seems like we have some good amount of functionality now that uh, people can use in their games. Um, so I'm very excited about that. and. You know, without further ado, I think we can start with uh, Bear Market Dev and Imposter and see uh, what that's all about, how you guys have progressed, uh, and where you want to take this. So, the uh, stage is yours. Bear Market Dev? Okay, it seems like maybe he's AFK for a sec, or he disconnected. Um... Okay, hopefully he can come back. Uh, maybe might be some connection issues. Uh, I would propose then to maybe start with you, Casey, uh, and, and follow up. Great. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm going to attempt. Uh, got the system where I'm routing audio from my browser app into it as well. So let me know if there's any issues. For sure. Maybe you should hear me. Good. Let me. Uh... So, there we go. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see that. And so I finally got computing uh, music on StarkNet. Uh, I've got a UI that controls uh, auto harmonization algorithms, and uh, the notes are computed on StarkNet and then sent back. And so, uh, can you all hear this? Um, uh, melody here. It's interesting, like it's behaving a bit. Could you guys hear that? Yeah, we could hear that. Okay, great. So this is just a. Uh, I've been uh, working on melodies for Realm, so this is just a demo melody that. I wanted to try and auto harmonize. So we've got this StarkNet drawer which can control the harmonization parameters, and we'll put this one in G Lydian. And we've got these um, kind of controls here which can control the spread of how far the harmonizations go and uh, where they go. So we'll just harmonize this one. Uh, and again, there's still some bugs in the interface, but. Uh, the, be able to be part G Lydian. Hold on just a second. Okay, so this be part G Lydian. I should be able to. So this is just one of the uh, harmonies, uh, and so here we go. So if we don't like that one, we can kind of change the parameters here. So if we want like a less tight spread, we can reharmonize here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have issues where it'll I have to, uh, some trouble with the history that I'll have to do, but there, this is a different harmony now, and so it'll sound kind of different. Okay. 
Cool. So that's a different, uh, different option to work with. And I have a pseudo random number generator that I can use to create variation. And so you should get a different harmonization every different block, even with the same parameters. And so uh, let's try, I'm going to just reload it real quick uh, with the same melody, uh, because I do have just a few UI uh, issues left. But let's try taking uh, doing a three-part thing. And then this inversion can select uh, if you want it to go, the harmonizations to go below or above the melody or a mixture. So let's try again on this melody and then we'll harmonize it with three voices or two voices below um and see how that sounds so, like that and then maybe have a shorter spread and let's see how this goes sometimes i'm having a hard time uh Generating the notes. Three part. Let me try one more time. Um, still a few bugs to iron out, but uh, yeah, we've got, you know, these numerical recipes that I've been adding in. And so, three, this, three. Yeah, okay. You know, so it uh, that sounds varied and it's definitely in the key. And so we've got variations that we can control. And um, yeah, so that's the general first part of this uh, kind of music computing on StarkNet. And, it, you know, I've obviously got some work to go in ironing out um, some of the UI bugs. Uh, and I'll be adding some recipes, but it's uh, starting to kind of clarify how this could be used in games where you've got this free variation that you have access to. So you can have some basic source material that is varied with every single call, um, you know, given a different block. And so that's kind of the general um, uh, way that it could be used in, in a games. This is a sort of tool which, you know, I'm putting out there so that everybody can use. And so this sort of concept is a bit more concrete. Um, and, yeah, so what I'm working on now, as I said, is just adding some of these extra recipes, and I've got tons with different harmonization styles. But at some point, as far as the recipes go, I want the next recipe to try is uh, Deepbok, which is a uh, machine learning recipe to reharmonize melodies in the style of Bach. And that would be extremely useful for games and being able to have that kind of um, uh, compositional kind of power. Um, on the other side uh, of the, the things to do, there is the hardening of the sort of file spec, uh, the, the MIDI data on the StarkNet side. Right now I've got the messages uh, being sent in a sort of abstracted way, but for sort of more interoperable purposes, I'll be ironing out what I've got half done with the uh, MIDI side of all of this messaging so that you could send this to some since from the 80s and it would be able to uh, read that and w once you start to have this sort of file spec hardened uh, you can kind of view the songs as smart contracts and what that could be with like say a guild system where you've got uh, several people being able to collaborate on this sort of state together um, is you know, kind of mind-boggling potential. So those are some of the things uh, that I'll be focusing on, uh, you know, in the next, you know, time period. But the next week we'll be really trying to get this debugged, released, so that everybody can use it. Cool. Awesome. Uh, I have, like, uh, two pointers for you um, in, in terms of machine learning. Uh, there's Giza on StarkNet and there's also Modulus Labs on StarkNet who are both exploring like AI and machine learning stuff on chain. Um, yeah. So might be worth to talk to them uh, in case you Who's... haven't yet. 
Yeah, I haven't talked to Fran, but I've been looking at the Giza docs because several of the implementations are uh, in PyTorch, and I think that there's a really good way to get that into Onyx. And so, uh, yeah, that's I'll be reaching out to him and uh, also reached out uh, to Sam as, uh, about uh, Guild stuff as well. So. Cool. And are you familiar with Modulus Labs yet? No, I haven't heard them. Okay. I, I'm going to send you a DM with their Twitter, um, Great. And, and we'll see if I can connect you with those guys. Um, uh, okay. Also, I I tried to reach out to Empiric Network uh, as well. I haven't heard back from them, but uh, would love to get in contact with some Oracle to discuss, uh, you know, kind of storage strategies. Sure. Yeah. I can actually ping them and see if I can get back to you, maybe. Um, I can do that as well. Um, that's yeah. really cool, that's awesome. Um, is it a fair assessment to say that basically what you've achieved now is to actually have melodies and harmonies and, and different keys uh, and so on to, to actually be generated on StarkNet? That's correct, yeah. So you select notes in here that you want to harmonize and then StarkNet takes the key and it can get smarter how it does this right now it's sort of specified and static where it could evolve over time but that's exactly it. all of this harmonic criteria is going to start net and the numbers are getting crunched statelessly right now so this is non-gaseous gotcha um and for context like is is this now um, already like open source? Is this already like accessible, or is this like uh, still like internal? Well, this is I'm just local host developing, but yeah, I'll release the uh, um, the repo and and all of that stuff so that people can um, you know see all of the kind of music tools and start to work with those if they want. Okay, awesome. And and if I'm like a game dev, then uh, once you have like uh open source this what's like the the steps that i need to take to actually like use this is this like something that someone can just jump in or is there like do, do you need to like read through like two pages of docs to be able to use this or is it like very straightforward right there is some sort of like specific kind of related stuff to this but i think it should be relatively straightforward and um it, hopefully like a implementation some aspect in realms will kind of clarify how this will work but i'm hoping that there will be these sort of assets that people can have in the form of uh, song information and then uh, you can have sort of algorithms that you can attach to different game logic and that will um you know be in the form of like calls that happen in during uh during different events or transactions and there will be, you know, rigging that, I imagine um, you would want some music background to do, you know, to, to help implement that. Um, but I do think that there's sort of a base level of this that it can be implemented just uh, if you have assets and you want to play them and you want them to vary exit uh, amount. So the idea is, as you're saying, is to have much more of a turnkey system for that's abstracted away for devs that aren't necessarily musically inclined. Gotcha. Makes makes perfect sense. Um, have you thought about uh, because you know we we've discussed a bit and and you you know this is probably going to be more into the direction of like a public good. Um, mm -hmm. Have you thought about like um, do you do you want to like do a Twitter account um, dedicated to to this project, or do you want this to be like um, just a a channel and Matchbox? Like, how do you how do you foresee like the communication side of this? Because um, if you kind of like release this into the open, right, for everybody to try out, then we would be more than happy to tweet about it, to to make an announcement in Discord, right, to get everybody yeah, to try yeah. it out, and so on and so forth. So I just want to take you know like kind of like hear your take on like how how do you see this. Um, go down basically yeah so this I, I imagine you know i've got some aspects of the site and you know logos and different things to kind of uh, get together but yeah the idea is this, it would, i would have my own twitter that i would be posting hey here's these improvements here's what's going on with this uh and then yeah i assume it would 
uh, I would kind of present it like that and start promoting it. And so, yeah, that would be, we should talk more about kind of the, the details of, of rollout and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. I'd be happy to do that for sure. Uh, I think there's obviously a ton of potential, right? Um, and this is, yeah. this is like a really cool building block for like literally every single game on Matchbox, right? Like every game can make use of this and implement yeah. like their melodies and their harmonies and, and their music in, into their games. So I think this is really pretty fucking amazing to be quite honest. I'm really stoked. And there's the gaming stuff and even just the musical collaboration composition stuff. Cause it, you know, it, could potentially, especially if it's a layer two situation where changing state, read and writing isn't too expensive, that um, people might opt for this instead of, you know, storing stuff on hard drives. And right. Because you could interact and just like pull it with a query and start working with people online that are working at the same time. So it's really, uh, yeah, it's it's really exciting stuff. So, so yeah, we should, we should talk some more on, on uh, rollout and that kind of stuff, but, but here's, here's how it's going now. And, uh, but some of those other topics, like finishing up the recipes, debugging, and then get into the fun stuff, like the, some deep learning recipes that people can start using and stuff like that. Awesome. And I, I assume the, like, you know, once, um, what Starknet, you know, rolls out Validium, that's going to be another huge uh, help for you, right? Because then you're going to be even more efficient with like data storage and you won't have to worry about that. Um, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very exciting times ahead, I think. Um, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. And now that things have sort of uh, gotten to a, a place where there's a showroom where I can easily see and show people the recipes and test, um, yeah, I think... Uh, development will be a lot more rapid and now i have something that i can kind of you know bring people into and that kind of stuff. that's awesome um on on that note uh do you foresee that people could help you out with the development if they wanted to like if we um like open up a working group and, and you post your github in there and you kind of um kind of talk about like hey there's this issue that, I, that needs fixing or there's this feature that someone can can implement do you need help with that or do you foresee that people will be um deep enough into this whole music thing that they could help you out feasibly or um is that something that you think will be very specialized and, and only um, be done by you essentially Ooh, well yeah i i've been thinking about that too and um uh yeah i i'd like to get it because there's some stuff you know uh React is less fun to me or different things like that. And and there's certain people with expertise where I'm just thinking, oh my God, my you know, five year roadmap could be like six months with the right um with the right folks and resources. So um yeah, let we should have like a, a chat more on on that kind of stuff because um yeah, I'm just so rarened and impatient to get to the next phases. Sure. Yeah. No, I I get that completely. Um. But yeah. Sounds like we should uh, we should talk sometime soon about like a few different things there. But very yeah, very exciting. Good. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Casey, for the update. Does, awesome. Does anybody else have uh, questions for Casey? And big right. thanks to Seco for uh, writing that React library that's making this whole thing happen. <laughs> um. Maybe one question that I actually have is like, um, I know this is like not um, super straightforward to answer right now, probably, but like in terms of fees, right? Uh, I assume you're gonna call like a contract for like every single melody or every time something plays or, or like with every block to get like a different melody or result. How do you foresee like fees playing out? Um, is that like a concern or do you think that's gonna be super cheap because it's not very complex? Or like, how, how do you think about that? I'm. I'm really uncertain about that. So right now I'm just making calls um, statelessly to a contract and it's not costing anything. And I don't know if that's different on, if that's going to be different on mainnet. But I think on a general level, at some point this, especially with machine learning stuff, is going to get uh, computationally more intensive. And uh, I'm hoping that... Um, potentially with like a layer end thing that some of this computation might be cheaper eventually. Uh, but right now it's sort of opaque to me because you don't have to pay any fees for these function calls that I'm doing right now. Um, and please, if someone uh, knows if that's going to be different in the future, holler. But um, uh, yeah, I, I think for, for right now, uh, this is, 
kind of an exploration into the cheaper side. And then, um, you know, as, you know, machine learning stuff uh, goes, then we can explore like just what the transaction costs of this sort of thing would be, because it may end up being that you can't, have a new bot corral generated every time a unique user goes into a certain space or something. It might be that this uh, bot corral would be attached to a, a realm or a given asset or something like that. So those sort of things might change the implementation and, and how it can go. And, and that stuff might scale with uh, how expensive computation is. Gotcha. Yeah, makes sense. I, I guess we'll just have to kind of, uh, you know, wait and see, and then you can still like iterate up on it. And in the worst case, you're just going to have to use the Validium uh, to scale this thing. Um, but yeah, makes makes all the sense in the world. Um, fascinating stuff. Uh, yeah, that, that's it for me. That's it from, from Casey. Do, do we have any questions now or can I move on? Okay, cool. If there are no questions, then uh, Hopefully, Bear Market Dev, you're, you're here now. We, we've had like some trouble before. Um, I would love to know uh, all about Imposter, right? You've participated in the Hackathon. Uh, you've built an Imposter game, which is very much like uh, leaning on Among Us, I think. Uh, I would love to know like how you guys have been progressing since then. What's what's next? How, how Imposter works? How it looks like? Um, well, I, I want to hear all about it, basically. Um, so the stage is yours. Yeah, sure. Thanks. So I, uh, apologies for earlier. My, my Discord crashed. Um, no worries. Can you see my, my screen right yeah, now that's presented? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I wanted to kind of just present maybe to the larger group. I think uh, maybe there's a little bit of new information for you, Swag, since the last time we talked, but I think I wanted to kind of present the high-level concept and the vision for what this project is. So project is imposter on StarkNet. A lot of the inspiration comes from the game Among Us because you obviously can see the uh, imposter um, character there on the left. Um, and so uh, this is actually a, a solo, a solo uh, adventure by me. I go by Testin um, on socials. My handle is bear market dev. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so what, what is it? So the, this was uh, mainly developed during the July Hackathon with Matchbox. Um, what I wanted to achieve was a fully on-chain, uh, turn-based, turn team versus team deception game uh, inspired by Among Us. Um, so I think what, what was important about what I was trying to do was kind of create the primitive of pri privacy on chain uh, with this game with the deception and bluffing part uh, obviously it requires a fog of war mechanism on the blockchain so my assumption was that uh, if it's readable on you know on a block explorer then uh, then it's not truly hidden and you know just assume that uh, your players are bots so if you can take some of the code and um, you know discover some piece of information then it kind of uh, it kind of ruins the the game right um, so that that went into a lot of the design considerations around the fog of war mechanism and, and in fact most of my time during the hackathon was wrestling on you know the different solutions because there's, there's not really not that I, I know of there's not any um, uh, you know Zero knowledge privacy solutions currently on um, on on Cairo. Um, yeah, so so the fog of war mechanism is is crucial for the game. Um, the image I'm showing on the right is kind of just the what I envisioned the the front end to look like for the kind of the bare bones MVP version of this. So, um, you know, just very simplistic, uh, building on top of like the fog of war mechanism, making, just making the game, um, mechanics and actions pretty straightforward. So, uh, you know, text-based stream of, uh, the game progress as you go, 
uh, you can kind of see the text there where where the actions are being called for the players to take action um, and then you know the different actions they can take and the kind of the characters representing them so I know I'm showing the among us like characters in here uh, this is I'm I am not uh, you know, eventually when, they, when I release the game, I'm not planning to release it with those same characters. I'll, I'll come up with something more original. Um, but it's very much inspired by Among Us. Um, there are certainly other um, bluffing games that exist. You know, I, I play a lot of uh, uh, kind of card games like One Night Werewolf, uh, uh, some other, like, you know, I forgot what the name of it is, but there was the, the fascist... Uh, versus allies game um there's certainly some mechanics that are similar there where there are turn-based um you know you do some actions and then you have the ability to to uh you know vote out the i guess the quote-unquote bad guys the imposters um so for for the mvp uh and this is kind of going off of the same vision for the hackathon just to keep it simple keep the mechanic simple um, because the, well, the most crucial part of this is really the fog of war piece. Um, so, you know, just imagine what the player journey will look like. You join the game, you, be, you, know, you basically register on the uh, game contract that you're joining it. Um, and then when the game starts, imposters are randomly selected. Uh, and you know that that list is kept mm -hmm. secret and hidden because we'll be able need, we'll need to check that list for every action. Um, and then for each turn, players have to commit an action and then execute all the actions once uh, the last player commits. So I'm, uh, for each round, it's really kind of like a commit and reveal in in that sense, but it's purely for the action. Uh, the identity of like the team membership for the players will need to be hidden from start to end right um, so that's kind of the the crucial part of the fog of war there um the the win conditions for this mvp is just that if imposters the imposters will win when they've uh basically killed all the the real ones and then the real ones will win um when they've completed the number uh a predetermined number of tasks and at the end of each turn the players will vote off somebody um, the intent there is that you know the the real ones will vote off the imposter uh, hopefully the right one and they can they can win the game and at the end uh, then then you do a final reveal of the team membership there so on the right here this kind of just showing the loop of that multi-round uh, game mechanic there So the, uh, I wanted to show the current progress right now to MVP. So the big squares are just kind of showing the major components that need to be built. Um, the light gray is in progress, not started is the dark gray. So uh, focus on the game engine. This, this game engine piece is really just making sure the mechanics work. Um, you know, the for the MVP, the tasks, the actions that the players can take is uh, for the real ones, it's just completing a task to, to, to be able to meet their win condition. And then for the imposters, the kill a player, and then finally the vote piece. Um, oops. There you go. Okay, so right now, uh, the game engine really manages the players. Uh, an action registry, you know, does all of the game state updates. Um, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, the code is coded in a way that it's handling four players uh, with one imposter. Uh, in the future, uh, I hope to make that scale to some infinite, I don't know, maybe infinite number of players if it if it allows it. But uh, obviously, to to just make that a little bit more dynamic than how it is today. Um, and then the last piece is just integrating the voting mechanic. So this fog of war infrastructure is really the most crucial part, and it's um, uh, it, it's frank, frankly the hardest part of of, of this project. Um, uh, since 
you know, since the hackathon, I've, I've spent mostly just researching the different privacy options, um, trying to get like hands-on experience with them as well, so I could better understand them. Um, it, it's not not really my background uh, with this tech, so um, so that's kind of been s- slow going, but it, it's it is the most crucial part. So I wanted to to make sure I understand it. So there are some different privacy action uh, options that I'm exploring. So there's you know circuits can, that can be built. Um, uh, looks like there's a solution. A potential solution out there for circuits on Cairo, um, you know, bulletproofs. Um, so, I, I imagine a lot of the the work moving forward will be spent mostly here, uh, because it is the most important piece. Sorry. Okay. So, and then the Game Factory is just a crucial piece of the MVP, so that you know. Um, for, you know, uh, game sessions can be create, created permissionlessly and new games can be created. So, um, And then the user-friendly front end is just would be just nice. And I've kind of just walked through what's um, what I envision it to be. Text-based, shows the progress of the game. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, and then the, I guess I talk about the roadmap here. So the MVP really, my focus is to just deploy uh, what I described previously on StarkNet with all those different actions. I think what I've described there is a playable version of it, although maybe not quite as fun because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but it, I think it'll create a um, pretty important primitive of fog of war on the blockchain. And then after that, you know, the next versions, 1.1, is just increasing the replayability, adding more features, adding more actions, uh, um, player actions that, you know, exist in Among Us, maybe taking inspiration from other games, um, and maybe even, uh, uh, you know, creating some new actions uh, that are that that can only be possible on the blockchain. So you know maybe encouraging uh, block sleuthing as a as an actual mechanic. Um, those 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 things can be interesting and create new strategies there. Um, and then the other piece is you know adding another dimension with locations, uh, player movements, and then putting some proximity based actions. Um, and all of that, of course, will still be. Uh, uh, you know, integrated with the fog of war mechanic. And then the next iteration would be just improving the the user experience. So adding some, you know, cool things like leaderboards, um, you know, some matchmaking so that um, you don't have to uh, maybe bring three other friends to just to play a game. Um, I mentioned the da- dynamic player capacity to to hold more than the four, and maybe just a really large uh, game session. Um, and then I think the in-game chat would be pretty cool. You know, Among Us already has that, but uh, you know that would just add more to the um, the the game mechanic itself as as you know something that people can use to bluff or coordinate. And then after that, um, you know, I think from there th- that would be that make for a solid game um, that could uh, have some potential replayability. And then, you know, moving to version two at two and up, you know, maybe exploring some real time actions, right? Instead of this turn based um, mechanic, uh, moving closer to what is among us. Where you can kind of move your your character in real time, um, you know, maybe in, incorporating NFT skins, improved graphics, uh, n- new maps and locations, obviously, and then maybe potentially in the in the future, um, you know, putting some prize pool incentive in there, whether they're associated to actual like money or or other digital assets. Um, 
but but you know I, I think that that piece of it will will be uh, fully reliant on the fog of war because that's uh, that is the most crucial piece I, I wouldn't I wouldn't start introducing any kind of like monetary incentives there if, if I'm not solid in the fog of war piece um, I think that's it that's all I had to, to talk about uh, the overview of the project obviously I think from moving forward I'm going to be uh, focusing on the fog of war infrastructure. Um, yeah, so if, if you need a, if you have any questions or want to reach out to me, I'm on the socials, Fair Market Dev. And, um, I put the GitHub in here, but I, I wouldn't. It's not. It's not code that I would say I'd ready be ready to publicize. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you so much for the presentation. I think it's super interesting. Um, can you go back to like the roadmap slide a bit? Yeah, thank you. Um, so I think it's really interesting. Um, you know, th this is like here, like some of my thoughts in, in terms of like a, a, a long-term kind of roadmap, right? Because you're, you're talking about like integrating um, uh, NFT skins and, and things like that. So I think an obvious play that you can make there is basically um, let people bring their NFTs that they own into the game and, and have that be their character, right? So you can have like board, board apes uh, as a player. Um, I think that's a very obvious kind of thing, which is also really cool in terms of composability and interoperability, right? But people can use their existing NFTs as like a player character. And for the maps, I think there's also potential here to basically use or theme maps around like some of the other games that are in Starknet, right? Um, so if there is like some some like location or some theme that other games are exploring, you could kind of use that and structure and, and create maps around that, right? Which again would be kind of cool um, in terms of like just being aligned and, and perhaps introducing some form of interoperability into this whole thing. Um, yeah, I think that's cool. I think another thing that you could explore potentially would be um, uh, in terms of like NFTs, um, you could explore like brick maybe um, in terms of like letting mm -hmm. people build like a character or, or, or an NFT um, avatar with bricks, uh, which would also be cool. Um, or you could even, if that's even possible in the future, like create a map out of bricks and then kind of put that, uh, you know, you could kind of create like a community around that where people can build stuff with bricks and then let them integrate that into the game as like custom maps, custom avatars, um, stuff like that, right? But this is all like long-term stuff, right? There's a few things you, you have to basically get right before and the biggest things like privacy and, and getting the fog of war mechanic right. Um, but these are like things that kind of popped into my mind like immediately when I, when I kind of um, read, you know, heard about your roadmap and what you think about um which is really interesting um another thing that i kind of want to explore is like uh the current among us is like very much a real-time game right um and you do plan on doing that in, in version 2 plus um i'm curious uh how you want to implement that right because um i think what you basically need to pull that off is like using a session key right um so yeah. people don't have to confirm transactions they can basically just click the kill key or perform action key and then automatically the transaction goes through immediately right um, i think that's yeah. going to be super important um, and i also think it is going to be super important to actually have like a real-time game that people can move around and that's basically exactly like among us but on the blockchain and then you can introduce all the cool nft and the interoperability stuff uh price pools for betting and um, maybe some other mechanics that uh, that are gonna pop into your mind as you build this thing. So I think, uh, you know, overall, I think this had definitely has like potential. If you just look at like the success of Among Us, it's it's incredible. And putting this on a blockchain with like NFTs and maybe some some more interesting mechanics and and expanding upon the concept, I think that can definitely have like a ton of potential, right? Um, so these are like some of my thoughts. Um, apart from that, I I don't have many questions except for like um with the privacy stuff like how far along are you do you think that you have a solution that is gonna be capable of doing the things that you needed to do or are you like very much exploring things right now and you're kind of skeptical that right now you can actually implement this um and what's like the timeline for pulling off this roadmap um i, I would say my my biggest roadblock is uh for, for the privacy solution is um, I would say my personal technical ability 
to implement it. Um, so it, most of the time I'm learning and kind of like leveraging work that other people are 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 putting into this space. Um, so like the circuits for Cairo, right? I think uh, making use of that, um, I think that's probably the most uh, promising solution. Um, I, I do think it's possible. It's just, it's just you know, just putting in the work, building some of those primitives. Um, I, I hesitate to put a timeline. I'm re I'm really not sure. Yeah, I, I I don't know if that answers your question. Defense. Sure. Yeah. Um, have you like? So I'm sure that there's like other games in Matchbox that probably think about privacy or want to implement that or at least have it on their roadmap, right? Uh, do we have anyone mm -hmm. here who has kind of thought about this and has like a good lead or, or a strong opinion on like what the best kind of uh, method is for that? Yeah. It, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if anyone will pipe up, but the other thing that I uh, kind of wrestled with when thinking about this was just you know full privacy versus obfuscation um and obviously i think i arrived at you know obfuscation wasn't, wasn't good enough of a solution um but maybe maybe somebody can maybe there's a piece of that that i haven't really thought of you know maybe some pieces of it can be obfuscated but you know maybe the list of imposters needs to be completely hidden but maybe the some of the actions don't need to be that way uh no don't need to be completely hidden um kind of going back to what i was saying like you know maybe block sleuthing is a mechanic of the game itself um kind of just kind of need to explore that aspect of it um yeah yeah I... so sorry go ahead yeah, the other, the other, the other, my the other fallback was to, to maybe like you know put some of that privacy off chain, but I, I really don't want to do that. Uh, but that is kind of like one one fallback to just get some uh, working product out, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Um... I feel like with the block sleuthing mechanic, uh, what you have to think about here is that basically if you introduce that mechanic, right, then your game is basically going to be like very unfairly tilted in favor of people that can code and, and know about block explorers and transaction decoding and, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? Um, so if you do introduce that, then you're going to basically tilt your game into like the direction of Dark Forest, right? Where basically if you can't code, then you are gonna lose every single game right so i think this is worth considering um if it's just this one mechanic then i probably wouldn't implement it because it just tilts the, the tables for like one small mechanic but mm -hmm. uh if you feel like there's like 10 other mechanics and you want to go like full on make this a game for like coders and smart people then you can go for it right but um it's it's a it's a worthy discussion to have like do you want this to be appealing to like normies and, and people that actually just want to play like among us with like cool nfts and like some interoperability stuff and like you know um betting on on an outcome or, or stuff like that or do you want this to be like a full-fledged kind of coding game where people are really battling out their smarts and wits right um so like i said yeah for just one small mechanic i probably wouldn't do it because that it's probably not worth it to to turn off the player base to all of the normies but mm -hmm. uh, if it's like a full-on thing then you know that makes sense um so i think that's something you have to think about as well um but yeah um i, f I feel like you know um once the privacy thing is like solved and and you're like confident then i think this has a ton of potential and you can kind of tune your attention towards the, the actual cool stuff and, and the actual gameplay right um so hopefully you're gonna arrive at some solution and by the way one question like have you looked at talk forest and how they handle privacy is that like like where's the difficult right is there like no zk library on, on starknet where you can easily like take that and implement it or or is there some other issue yeah so yeah that it that, that i looked at dark forest first um it's really the circuit uh the circuit circuit verification so it's the it's the verifier for you know that uh like groth 16 whatever it's called 
uh, it's not there, there's nothing in Cairo that exists. Um, it I think the uh, what is it like Circum, you know, the team library they they have it in in Solidity, but uh, not in Cairo. Uh, there is a solution out there that I I'm meaning to try. Uh, that another team put out. I think it's uh, it's it's in my references. It's like in the Lambda class GitHub. So they have a this third one here. So it's circum export to Cairo. Um, I think getting this, if this does work, um, I would say like we're most they're like we're pretty much there, uh, and then. All like I think all the other remaining pieces like the 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 snark setup um, can all be done on like on the browser um, and then just storing the keys right so that I think that that'll get me there pretty much. Okay, cool. Um, if you say that there's solidity codes that could work as well. But one option you have would be to use the Rob transpiler, right? And transpile that to Cairo. Um, it's almost mm -hmm. certainly not going to be perfect, right? But if it's like, yeah, perfect, I, I, yeah. I tried that actually. <laughs> oh, I see. I tra I transpiled it, and then I just I wasn't confident at what I saw. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I think it it has it has a lot to do with the big ints that that's being used. Um, I think I'm not sure those will transpile. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I can look more into it, though. OK, I see. No, I, I just thought, you know, I, I'll throw this out there as well, right? If that had led to like a workable version, then that's good enough until somebody put something uh, decent yeah. out. Uh, but OK, um, yeah, sounds like you're, you're going to go with Circrum, hopefully, and, and see if that works, hopefully. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. Um, do we have any questions for, uh, for bear market death and imposter? If there are no questions, then uh, we can wrap up this call. Uh, that was it. Um, so thank you very much to Casey for Music Tools. Very, very exciting stuff. And thank you, Barack Dev, for presenting this and updating us on like the state of the project and the kind of big challenge that you're facing right now. Hopefully, you can resolve it uh, or somebody puts out a, a decent CK um, implementation uh, in terms of privacy on StarkNet. And you can move on to like actually building this game and, and making it really cool. Um, so yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, see you guys next week. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.